clinical chemistry 2, but now it was merged to clinical chemistry 1. So liver function would we'll talk about liver, of course, liver function. And later, I would teach you how to remember things better when it comes to liver function and even kidney function for our next meeting this Thursday, which will be our last meeting on Thursday. So again, good afternoon to everyone. So the outline of our discussion would be the anatomy of your liver. So both the gross and microscopic. We will be discussing the biochemical function, which I which will be the last part of what I will be discussing this afternoon. So until the biochemical function of your biochemical function of your liver. And that is just 17 slides. Okay. That is just 17 important slides. So as you all know, everyone, liver is um liver is is the largest internal organ. Okay. Largest internal organ. The largest organ, of course, is still your skin, but the largest internal organ is your um is your liver. So the liver is very large and it is a complex organ responsible for very vital tasks in your body. So later on, um, the reason why we have this thing called liver function test because your liver do function not just one, but various um, various function and various processes inside your body. If you can still remember, if you can still remember, your liver is also a site of hematopoiesis when you are still an, when you are still an, a fetus, right? When you are still a fetus, when we are all still fetus, our liver is also a site for hematopoiesis. Okay? A site for hematopoiesis. Same thing with your spleen. So your liver can actually perform various uh, various functions. And in each function, meron siyang nakarapat or meron siyang katapat na test. Okay? Meron siyang nakatapat na test. Later on, you'll, um, you'll understand it much, much better. So let's go to the gross anatomy of your liver first. So again, your 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 liver is divided into two lobes, your right and your left lobe. As you can see clearly in this picture, your liver, the right lobe of your liver is six times larger than the left lobe. Okay? Six times larger than the left lobe. So your liver is located on the upper right portion of your abdominal cavity and is protected by your lower rib cage. So it is um it is placed by a ligamentous attachment so that um your liver will be in place on that um paano ba to? um right high right um right abdominal right abdominal cavity okay upper right abdominal cavity so the liver is large and a complex organ weighing approximately 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms, okay, 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms. And at the same time, your liver also um, is an organ where much of your blood is actually flowing. Um, on your screen, you can see your hepatic artery, okay, your hepatic artery. You also have, um, you also have your portal vein, and we have um, your common bile duct, your common bile duct where your liver and your gallbladder would be um, connected. Your hepatic artery, okay, your, in your hepatic artery, 25% of your blood, 25% of your oxygen, 25% of your blood flows into your hepatic artery. So you're in your hepatic artery, that is where the oxygenated blood is coming in so that all processes, all aerobic processes in your liver will be supported on your portal vein, on the other hand, we have seventy-five percent. Okay, seventy-five percent of your of your of the blood coming in are through your portal vein. Anong pinagkaiba ng blood coming in the hepatic artery and the portal vein? The, the hepatic artery, these are oxygenated blood. In the portal vein, these are nutrient-rich blood. So when I say nutrient-rich blood, I'm talking about vitamins, minerals carbohydrates, lipids, and even proteins, okay? So 75% of that blood actually flows through our, our blood. So again, we have two blood sources, ha? Your hepatic artery and your portal vein, okay? Hepatic artery and your portal vein. In addition to that, okay, in addition to that, we also have your common bile duct, okay? We have your 
common bile duct where much of the drainage dr uh, for the drainage of your waste for the drainage of your bile and also for your bilirubin okay also for your bilirubin so having said that now okay having said that now let's move forward with your mic i'll just jump into the microscopic part so i could spend more time with the mo more important information with your liver function okay so microscopically okay microscopically um your liver is said to be the chief metabolic organ why do we say metabolic organ um i'll ponder i'll elaborate that later um it receives 1.5 liters of blood per minute makikitanda ako ng 1.5 liters because it had come out in a lot of licensure exams already um and in your cells we have in your in your liver rather we have two types of cell we have your hepatocytes and we have your copper cells which are your macrophages okay your liver macrophages so inside your ano inside your inside your liver there are majority of the cells are your hepatocytes okay majority of your cells are hepatocytes and unlike other cells in the body like your lungs like your heart na ma-deprive lang or masira lang ng konti yung inyong tissue in the lungs and tissue in your heart there would be complications already but remember okay remember for your liver um for any for all the processes of your liver to be abolished 80 percent of the cell or 80 percent of the liver must be destroyed Okay? Kahit 20% na lang, okay? Kahit 20% na lang yung functional sa liver, it can still perform its function. Mahirap man, yes, it would be difficult for the liver, but it can still perform its function. Okay? It can still perform its function. Again, 80%. Okay? 80% should be first abolished. Question, how many percent of nitrogen? Is um con is contained in your dietary protein? Can I see it in the chat box? How many percent? How many percent? That is sixteen. Correct. That is sixteen percent. Sixteen percent of nitrogen comes from our diet. Okay. So sixteen percent. So ganon talaga. Tatanungin ko yung mga magkakahawig na magkakahawig na tanong. So sixteen percent, eighty percent total abolishment of function if 80% of your liver is already destroyed okay so the cells are arranged into your lobule okay or your hepatic lobules which are the atomic unit of your liver okay the atomic unit of your liver are called your lobules sir do we have to be to be specific na like liver lobule or hepatic lobule no automatically i would understand that that is already a um you're pertaining to the lobules okay so I, I don't know if you can see it clearly on your screen but you can also see here the portal vein and the portal vein at the same time the bile canal and the hepatic sinusoids the hepatic sinusoids later will be a very important area where part of your bilirubin will be uh, part of your bilirubin would be processed Sir, anong goal natin this afternoon? Okay, anong goal natin this afternoon? Let's just set it, no, para um, alam natin what to expect this afternoon. This afternoon, my goal is for you to understand, number one, the different functions of your liver. Okay, the different functions of your liver so that when we go to the different tests, alam ninyo na bawat test na yon ginagawa to check a specific function of your liver. Secondly, for you to entirely understand the bilirubin metabolism okay the bilirubin metabolism so let's start with now with the biochemical function if you can see in your book it's divided into three only okay it's divided into three which is your um secreto excretory secretory metabolism and your detox and the, your detoxification okay those are the common function of your liver but personally I would want that to be separated into five, okay? Please write this down, the five function of your liver because this five would help you classify the test later on in our discussions would be number one is your excretory, 
Okay? The excretory function of your liver. The ability of your liver to excrete biomolecules, to excrete other um, to excrete other substances that it is producing. That is one, excretory. Second is secretory. Okay? Sec uh, second is secretory. Secretory, somehow similar to your excretory. Kasi secrete and excrete almost the same. Ang ine-excrete lang natin, the ways secrete natin are the one needed by the body. So let me just fix that definition for you. Excretory, the waste materials, the secretory are the um, the biomolecules needed by your body. The second one is conjugation. Okay, the your body's ability to conjugate. Okay, is fa is um, being done by your liver. So conjugation. Next thing is storage. Okay, next is your storage. Um, I opted to separate storage from metabolism because they are two different um, things happening inside your body. So when it comes to storage, you all know that your glycogen is stored in your liver and in your muscles. Your amino acid pool is also in your liver. So a lot of the storage are in your liver as well. Aside from that, aside from is next one is metabolism because anabolism and catabolism of substances happen inside your liver and then the last one is detoxification okay the last one is detoxification what do we detoxify we, do we detoxify alcohol and we detoxify toxins we detoxify your drugs so all of those five are function of your liver and as you can see madami siyang ganap okay madaming ganap yung liver and it's just so amazing how your liver can perform all those five right at this very moment that we are talking. Right at this very moment that we are talking, some of your RBC are currently um, being ruptured, okay, either intravascular or extravascular. And a lot of the processing afterwards will be done by your liver. You just ate this uh, um, kanina. Uh, you just ate your merienda or your lunch. And did you know that your liver is now busy processing all those cholesterol triglyceride and carbohydrates and even proteins that you have digested okay and eventually later on it, it would be busy take um metabolizing the drugs the vitamins that we have taken in so in short your liver is very important and hopefully um this afternoon you would find a very a, a newfound love with your liver function, okay? Alagaan yung liver, wag laging nasa PS kada Friday night at kada Sunday, uh, kada, sat kada weekends, okay? So let's go with the first one which is excretory and the secretory function. And we also have the conjugation, synthetic metabolic, and we have the detoxification in your metabolism. As you can see, I separated synthetic and metabolic. So later on, um, I'll, I'll discuss that to you guys. So when it comes to excretory and secretory function, your your liver is the one that excrete your bile and your your bile acids, your bile salts, and your your pigments. The pigment why your your stool is actually colored brown is because of your urobilin or your urobilinogen, and that is actually. I don't know if you know if you knew where does your urobilinogen came from. Let me just check. Where does urobilinogen came from? Where does urobilinogen came from? San siya galing? O3, O1, O2, O3, O4. Where did it came from? The brown pigment in your stool, where did it came from? From your heme? Okay. Medyo, okay, heme. Intestines? Okay. What else? I want to see answers. Him. Sabi nila him. Okay? Pero later on, iaanan natin. Question. What do you call the presence of um, gray, clay, clay colored stool? Clay colored stool. What do you call that? Tapos na ba kayo sa fecalysis? Clay colored stool. Okay, so hindi ko nakikita, wala naman din sumasagot. Oh, let me just proceed. Okay, so the bile acids, uh, the bile acids, your colic acids, and your um, kenodeoxycholic acids are conjugated with your amino acids and your glycine and your taurine to form your bile salt. So please remember that your bile acid is a, pro a byproduct of your cholesterol as well. Okay, 
a byproduct of your cholesterol. So, with regards to excretory and secretory, okay, with regards to secretory and excretory, this one is not directly um, associated sometimes with your liver kasi nga, it's, it's situated in your gallbladder pa. Okay? The bile acids will be transferred to your your gallbladder and eventually that is where um the portal tra the the portal triad will will take place and then yung bile acid natin will be emptied into your intestine for the emulsification of fats and lipids during um during digestion okay during digestion much of the i know much of the um discussion this afternoon with regards to liver function would actually revolve around your conjugation function and what specific what compound are we are we talking about with regards to conjugation we're talking about your bilirubin metabolism and bilirubin came from him okay h-e-m-e -E. so tama yung sagot ni chua at saka ni joseph with regards to where does urobilina gen came from originally if we're gonna go to the genesis talaga it came from your him your proto your heme which is your protoporphyrin 9 okay your protoporphyrin 9 on average okay on average a healthy individual produce around 200 to 300 milligrams of bilirubin which is a lot okay which is a lot and you would ask yourself now sir if a lot of my uh, if there's a lot of bilirubin inside my body right now why is it that i do not have jaundice which led me again to another point that yung yellow discoloration of your skin, your sclera, which is called your jaundice, is because of increased bilirubin. Okay? It is because of increased bilirubin. So, having said that now, with regards to conjugation of your bilirubin, okay, the conjugation of your bilirubin is the main function of your liver. The main function of your liver. That's why in cases of hepatitis, cirrhosis, liver um liver cirrhosis um alcohol alcoholism pag may liver may tama si liver okay pag may tama na yung liver mo you would start to have jaundice as well okay you would also have to have jaundice at the same time aside from that okay your your liver function also as a synthetic and, and as a metabolic organ so when i say synthetic we're talking about anabolism what do you mean by anabolism, sir? The building up, the production, the synthesis of a particular compound are all done by your liver. Okay? So your carbohydrates, your lipids, and your proteins all are being um all are being um metabolized inside your body, inside your liver, rather. So in your um, carbohydrate metabolism, so isn't it we talk about your glycolysis, we did talk about your glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, your gluconeogenesis. So all of these things are happening in your liver as well, okay? Sir, what do you mean na in your liver? Hindi ba sir, glycolysis can happen in any part of my body? Yes, your cells can do glycolysis, but majority, of course, of that glycolytic processes are happening inside your, inside your, inside your liver. In addition to that, your glycogen and your glycogenolysis are happening in your liver because majority of your glycogen are stored in your liver as well. Okay, they are stored in your liver. So glycolysis does happen in your cells. Do not get confused with that. Okay, do not get confused with with, with um, glycolysis in the liver. Aside from carbohydrate metabolism, I will not go to these things now one by one. Um, you can just review that on your notes and on our recorded videos. Um, lipid metabolism is also um, happening inside your liver. So if you can still remember um, from the moment that your chylomicrons have um, carried your exogenous triglyceride, it will now deliver it to your liver your liver will process it will store it and then eventually will become endogenous triglyceride in your cholesterol okay your cholesterol so we have your citric acid cycle okay um 
And roughly, okay, 70% of, your, of the daily production of your cholesterol, roughly 1.5 to 2.5 grams are produced by your liver. I remember one of your batchmates, hindi ko nakasabing classmate, one of your batchmates asked me, what about the cholesterol coming from my diet? So, anong nangyayari daw dun sa cholesterol coming from his diet? So, to answer it now, 30% of that cholesterol, 30% of the overall cholesterol in your body are actually exo- are from your diet. Sir, paano po nangyari yun? Um, it's, um, it's also being carried by your chylomicrons. Okay? Carried by your chylomicrons. So, hopefully, hindi ko ginugulo yung mga inyong pagkakaintindi with regards to chylomicrons. Sir, akala ko ba chylomicrons only carry exogenous triglyceride? It's wrong. It's wrong to say it's it only carry your um uh, it's wrong to say that it can only carry your tri- your triglyceride because it can also carry your um it can also carry your cholesterol okay your cholesterol so lipid metabolism ayan of course protein metabolism so all proteins especially the most important proteins are all synthesized by the liver um such as your albumin except for your what except for your immunoglobulins okay except for your immunoglobulins your antibodies and another thing that is an exception would be your what would be your adult hemoglobin okay would be your adult hemoglobin sir why because um, your hemoglobin if we're going to talk about the organ it's happening on your bone marrow okay it's happening in your bone marrow so remember that your albumin Um, the major or the general transport protein of your body is majority uh, majority of all the chemicals, all the substances in your body is being carried by your albumin are also produced by your liver. So now let's go to the detoxification. Okay, the detoxification. Ayan, wait lang. Ayan, acu- uh, positive and, and negative acute phase reactant. At the same time, your, um, your coagulation Um, coagulation proteins or coagulation factors and the transamination and the deamination of proteins also happen in your liver so let's talk about your detoxification and drug metabolism so we have this thing called first pass metabolism so first pass metabolism is a concept in pharmacology okay a concept in pharmacology whereby um, when you take in 100 kunari, you take in 500 milligrams of paracetamol that 500 milligrams of paracetamol will not be delivered into your cells as 100 as 500 milligrams of um, paracetamol because of first pass your 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 drugs your your medicines will be first metabolized by your liver okay it will be first metabolized by your liver so your liver and can allow important substances to reach your systemic circulation um But your liver serves as a barrier. Okay, it serves as a barrier for your uh, your your body. Why? Because it prevents toxic and harmful substances from reaching your systemic circulation. If you have discussed in your bacteriology already, there are some drugs that are hepatotoxic, nephrotoxic, de ba? May mga drugs na ganon. So a lot of the drugs are actually affecting your liver. Why? Because your liver would first metabolize all of those things. They metabolize all your medicine, all the drugs that are in your body. May ne- metabolize muna yan ni liver. Okay? So the detoxification, the drug metabolism, happen inside your liver. So, sir, can you give us an example of one uh, of a substance that is being detoxified inside your body? Anyone? Baka may nakapag-advance reading now. Can you give me an example of a substance that is being detoxified inside your body? Anyone? Chua, did, are you raising your hand? Alia? Hindi po, sir. Nakapress lang po. Okay. Sorry po. So, answer. So, an example, guys, is your ammonia. Okay, an example is your ammonia. Your ammonia is a natural byproduct of your protein metabolism. So, natural na nag-produce yung katawan mo ng ammonia. It's just that ammonia is toxic 
for your body. Uh, toxic for your brains, toxic for your kidneys. Okay? So, who will save the day? Who will save the day? It will be your liver. Your liver, when we say detoxification, we are transforming something that is toxic, okay? A toxin into a more safe, into a more um, suitable form inside your body. A safer version of that particular substance. So in this case, your ammonia will be um, will be converted into becoming your urea. That's why you have your blood urea nitrogen. Okay, your ammonia will be converted into your urea. So that is a function. Um, that is one function of your liver to detoxify your ammonia and other toxin inside your body. And at the same time, your other drug that you also take in, your liver also metabolize that. Okay? Your liver also metabolize that. So your liver can um, the act can detoxify and metabolize your drug by performing two mechanisms. One can be inactivation or your excretion, okay? One can be metab inactivation and the second one is your excretion, okay? So before this day end, okay, before this day end, I just want us to um, discuss how bilirubin is, um, how bilirubin is being metabolized. And guys, uh, pa, I just want you to listen very um, intently with the next few um, slides that I will be flashing on your screen. So to start with, bilirubin came from the destruction of your red blood cells. Okay? Bilirubin came from the destruction of your red blood cells. And this is how the story went. So remember that after 120 days, okay, after 120 days, that is the normal and the normal lifespan of your RBC, your RBC would undergo destruction either intra or extravascular. Okay? So after your RBC is destroyed, all the content of your RBC would now be liberated into your blood vessels or yeah into your in your plasma in general so you have your uh, pag na rupture yung rbc mo anong lalabas si hemoglobin correct and your hemoglobin if you can still remember are made up of three major components what are the three major components of your bilirubin uh, of your hemoglobin rather that is your iron your globin which is your protein and your heme question what will carry your iron? What will carry your iron here? Who will carry the iron? Who will carry your iron? Okay. Which which one will carry your iron? Correct. That would be your transferrin. Okay. That will be your transferrin. What about your uh, what about your protein? Who will carry your protein? Sige nga, who will carry your protein? I just want to I just want to check who can answer this. Who can what substance or what protein will carry your ano? Will will carry your amino acids, your globin. The one that will carry it actually will be your albumin, okay? Pakitandaan na lang yun ha, pakisulat sa inyong notes. The one that will carry it is your albumin. Why your albumin? Because your albumin is a major carrier it is the general carrier molecule. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, di ba, lahat ng, ng kailangan ng carrier molecule na wala siyang specific na na-discuss would be carried by your albumin. Okay? So your amino acids will be carried by your albumin. Okay? Dadalhin niya sa liver. Si iron, susunduin ni, fer ni, susunduin ni transferrin. Okay? Susunduin ni transferrin, i-store niya sa bones, sa liver, in the form of your ferritin. Okay, in the form of your ferritin. Sir, nawala po sa kwento si hemopexin. Ay, nawala po sa kwento si him. Si him ay dadalhin ni no, dadalhin po siya ni hemopexin. Okay? Your him will be carried by your hemopexin and will deliver it to your liver. But if you have read your no, if you have read your books right now, some of your him will readily be um some of your heme will automatically be converted to your bilirubin, okay? Will automatically be converted to your bilirubin. What type of bilirubin? That is your unconjugated 
bilirubin. Okay? Your unconjugated bilirubin. And in that sense, it will now be carried by your albumin. So, let us just clear the, the air kasi alam ko baka na guguluhan na kayo. I will just focus on the heme right now. So, after your RBC is ruptured, is destroyed, hemoglobin will go out. Now, I just want to isolate your heme. Your heme will now be converted to your bilirubin. But there are two types of bilirubin that I want you to remember, guys. The conjugated and the unconjugated bilirubin. Okay? The conjugated and the unconjugated bilirubin. What happened is that your heme will be readily be, will be um, converted into becoming your unconjugated bilirubin. Your unconjugated bilirubin, in return, will be carried by your albumin. Okay? Will be carried by your al albumin and then it will deliver it into your hepatocytes. Okay? It will deliver your unconjugated bilirubin into your liver, now converting it to your unconjugated bilirubin. Which leads me now to the two types of me to the two major types of bilirubin, your unconjugated bilirubin and your conjugated bilirubin. Okay? Your conjugated bilirubin. Before I um, I differentiate the two, let's just finish the meta the pathway first. So the unconjugated bilirubin will be carried, uh, will be delivered by your albumin into your liver, specifically in your hepatocytes. Okay? In your hepatocytes. So the unconjugated bilirubin this time will be acted upon by an enzyme. And what enzyme is that? That is your UDPG. Okay? That is your UD, uh, UDPGT, which is your uridyl diphosphate glucoronyl transferase. Sure, do we have to memorize the entire thing? Yes. Um, sadly, you should. So UDPGT is uridyl diphosphate glucoronyl transferase transferase. Again, uridyl diphosphate glucoronyl transferase. Okay? Glucoronyl transferase. That will, that is the one that will reduce your unconjugated bilirubin into becoming your conjugated bilirubin. Okay? Now that you have your conjugated bilirubin, your conjugated bilirubin will now be excreted out of your liver, okay, into what? into your intestines, okay? Into your intestine. So that conjugated bilirubin will now be further reduced by your gastrointestinal bacteria forming now your urobilinogen, okay? Forming now your urobilinogen. Your urobilinogen is excreted into two ways. It can be excreted through your... Uh, it can be excreted through your feces or it can be reabsorbed back in your body, okay? It can be reabsorbed back in your body whereby it will pass through your kidneys kaya meron, kaya, meron ka rin urobilinogen sa urine, okay? Your urobilinogen in your urine. And so you can see the yellowish color, the, um, discoloration of both your feces and even your urine can be attributed through your urobilinogen, okay? Your urobilinogen. Of course, um, if you've discussed in your AUBF that this urobilinogen will be converted pa to uro, uh, urobilin and then eventually excreted in your in your in your stool, okay? So some of the some of the urobilinogen kasi will be reabsorbed back. Ayan, twenty percent of your urobilinogen will be reabsorbed and will recirculate in your liver. Ganun ulit siya. Yung urobilinogen mo gagawing conjugated tapos i-dispose ulit sa stool or either it can go to your urine. Okay? It can go to your urine. Guys, am I still making sense to you? Ayan. Um, am I still clear? Hello? Ayan. So, yun yung mangyayari sa ating ano, yun yung mangyayari sa ating um, may nag-reply. Yun yung mangyayari sa, although hindi ko rin nakita yung wala palang nag-reply. So, yun yung mangyayari sa bilirubin natin. So, I'll just, ano na lang, uh, differentiate to you. Ulitin ko na lang yung sinasabi ko kanina. So, your bilirubin, there are two types of bilirubin inside your body. Your um, unconjugated and your conjugated bilirubin. 
they can also be called your B1 and your B2. Okay? So, so your B1, okay, your B1, according to order, after him, your B1 is known as your unconjugated bilirubin. Your unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble, meaning to say, um, it cannot freely flow in your plasma. That is the reason why your albumin needs to carry it and deliver it to your liver. Having said that it is water insoluble, automatically, it is nonpolar. It is hydrophobic. Okay? It is hydrophobic. Okay? So, other name, okay? Mamaya ko na i-discuss yung indirect. We also call it your hemobilirubin. And we also, we can call, also call it your prehepatic bilirubin. Okay? Your prehepatic bilirubin. On the other hand, okay, on the other hand, we also have your bilirubin 2, also known as your conjugated bilirubin, which is a water-soluble bilirubin. That's why it doesn't need your, plus it doesn't need your albumin to carry it to be transported in your plasma. Your conjugated bilirubin is polar, meaning to say water-loving, hydrophilic. Okay? We can also call it your cole bilirubin. And it is a... Um, it is also known as the hepatic, post-hepatic, obstructive, and regulative bilirubin. Okay? Regulative bilirubin. So, let's talk about the indirect and the direct reacting. Okay? Dahil nga sa nonpolar ang iyong bilirubin 1, okay, ang inyong unconjugated bilirubin, upon the addition of your diazo reagent, okay, diazo reagent, so just type it in na lang sa inyong ano, diazo, diazo reagent, okay? We are using your diazo reagent, okay? We are using your diazo reagent, and upon the addition of your diazo reagent, um, diazo reagent, ayan. Upon the addition of diazo reagent, your bilirubin 1 cannot, okay? It cannot direct, it cannot react with your diazo reagent immediately, Kaya siya tinawag na indirect reacting bilirubin. Sir, bakit naman po tinawag si B2 na direct? Because upon the, dia the addition of diazo reagent, okay, the, the, uh, upon the addition of your diazo reagent, it will now form your diazo bilirubin. Okay? It will now form your diazo bilirubin. Okay? So, kaya din siya tinawag na slow reacting kasi nga it will not readily uh, um, react with your diazo reagent and your B2 is a one minute prompt bilirubin meaning to say it is a fast reacting bilirubin with regards to your reagent. Sir, saan po ba ano pong gamit ng reagent? It is for the measurement of your bilirubin. Okay? It is for the measurement of your bilirubin. So, to differentiate it further, ha, to differentiate it further, B1 is B1 is synonymous to unconjugated bilirubin, to hemobilirubin, and indirect bilirubin. Your B2, on the other hand, we call it conjugated bilirubin, and we call it your direct bilirubin. Okay? We call it direct bilirubin. So on your exams, you can see, you can read um, your bilirubin in, in three ways. Either B1, B2, unconjugated, conjugated, direct, or indirect. Whatever is being um, used, you should be able to identify which is which. Okay? Which, which is which. So, having said that now, okay, we have your B1, we have your B2, we also have your delta bilirubin. Sir, is it normal to have delta bilirubin? No, it's not. Okay? Is it normal? In, um, is it normal? Ideally, hindi. Wala ka dapat, um, wala ka dapat um, delta bilirubin. So as you can see, we have here your conjugated, unconjugated, and your total bilirubin. And the conversion factor is 17.1. Okay? So what do we mean by seven, that 17.1? So if you multiply, um, ayan, when you multiply, when you multiply 0 0.2, milligrams, you would convert it to micromole per liter. To micromole per liter. So, yun yung use ng conversion factor. Okay? So, we have your delta bilirubin. Sabi ko nga kanina, your delta bilirubin is a conjugated bilirubin. 
Okay? It is a type of a conjugated bilirubin. But it is tightly bound to albumin. Sir, di ba sabi mo kanina, hindi kailangan ng carrier protein ng aking conjugated bilirubin dahil water-soluble naman siya? Yes, hindi ko pa rin naman binabawi yon. Ang problema lang kay delta bilirubin is that your delta bilirubin is a type of conjugated bilirubin that is tightly attached to your albumin. Okay? It is tightly attached to your albumin. So kung tightly attached siya sa iyong albumin, this type of bilirubin has a longer half-life. Okay? It has a longer half-life than all the other bilirubin. Your delta bilirubin happens because, number one, of, ano, of biliary obstruction. Okay? It happens because of biliary obstruction. Sir, bakit po? Let me go back to this part. Okay? Di ba sabi natin kanina that your conjugated bilirubin will be excreted out of your liver into your intestine. Okay? Going to your intestine. But because of biliary tract obstruction, kunwari may, may gallstone, may, may gallstone doon, we call it cholelithiasis. Okay? Dahil nga meron kang gallstone, okay? Dahil meron kang gallstone, anong mangyayari? Yung gallstone na yun, i-obstruct niya yung kanal kung saan dadaan si bilirubin. Dahil walang ibang madaanan si bilirubin na dapat doon siya sa, papalabas siya sa intestine, anong nangyayari? Your bilirubin will be released in your bloodstream. Okay? Will be released in your bloodstream and will be tightly, okay? Will be tightly um, adhering to your albumin. Okay? Will be tightly adhering to your albumin. At the same time, ayan, um, your delta bilirubin um, um, is being monitored according to its decline after surgical removal of your gallstone. Okay? After surgical removal of your gallstone, dahil nga sarado yung iyong, yung, um, dahil nga, di ba, meron kang gallstone, sarado yung, yung, ano mo, sarado yung passage na yon. So, ang bilirubin mo, nare-release sa pamamagitan ng pagsakay sa albumin. So, nasa plasma mo siya. So, because of that, okay, because of that, um, your delta bilirubin, yung pagbaba ng delta bilirubin sa katawan mo would be a, be a good indicator that you are recovering na after surgical removal ng gallstone mo. So, dahil tinanggal mo na nga yung gallstone mo, makakadaan na ulit si bilirubin. Dahil doon, makakadaan na si bilirubin, bababa na si delta bilirubin. Okay? So, your delta bilirubin is calculated as follow. So, total bilirubin, okay, minus the, del the direct bilirubin and the indirect bilirubin, you would get now your delta bilirubin. So, it is calculated, it is not calculated in neonatal patients with 14 days, uh, 14 days below na babies because it is normal for them to to be higher okay normal for them to be to have higher um delta bilirubin so for this particular topic i will be ending it here so before i end before i officially end this um recording let me just um let me just um ask you na lang if you if you still have any questions with regards to the ano i will repeat it na lang but i'll end the recording na for today.